Hello and welcome to End Goals, an LCMS Youth Ministry Podcast. I'm host Reverend Mark Kiesling and I'm with DCE Juliana Schultz. And we are here to bring parents, church workers, and lay leaders discussions and resources to help your youth ministry meet its end goal, which is young people who are disciples of Jesus Christ for life. Today, we are talking with Pastor Trevor Sutton about one of the resources that he wrote on youthesource.com. As part of our End Goals podcast, we have been talking with those who designed resources related to the 2019 LCMS Youth Gathering, Real Present God. On Youth Esource, there are many, many resources available for you and your youth ministry, but particularly you'll be able to find a number of resources either by speakers who are at the gathering or maybe around the theme or that dive into the Psalms. And Pastor Sutton was one of those who wrote a resource for us. Joining us today is Pastor Trevor Sutton, who's the Associate Pastor and Director of Ministry at St. Luke Lutheran Church in Lansing, Michigan. We are so excited to have him with us today. Uh, Pastor Sutton, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you doing? Doing great. Great. Well, we are so thankful that you're taking the time to be with us today. And we like to get to know our guests a little bit by asking them some uh, basic questions. And so one thing we'd love for you to do is tell us a little bit about your many vocations. So I'm pastor at St. Luke Lutheran Church. Uh, We have two campuses, and uh, one of them is downtown Lansing. One of them is in sort of the suburbs, and uh, it's an extremely diverse congregation. So uh, no two days in my schedule look exactly the same. Uh, It's a a fun challenge, but a challenge nonetheless. Uh, I'm married to my wife, Elizabeth. We've been married almost 10 years now, and uh, we also have two daughters, uh, Grace and Hannah, and uh, they're a first grader and a preschooler. And I believe you're quite the avid fisherman. Is that right? <laughs> I wouldn't say avid, but I love it. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, fly fishing is one of my favorite pastimes. I don't get to do it very much, but I love doing it when I do. Great. So uh, you get to work with young people as a pastor, uh, but maybe thinking about what was a key moment for you in youth ministry uh, when maybe you were in junior high or high school? We'd love to hear a little bit about the history of the people who uh, come and speak with us. Yeah, so I I probably shouldn't say this to a bunch of youth ministry people, but I wasn't super connected in my congregation's youth ministry programs. Uh, And and as a result of that, really my my family, uh, through Bible reading together and and prayer together as a family, that was a really pivotal thing for me in my adolescence and and during my youth, uh, to, to pray with my family and to discuss God's Word with my family. So it's interesting. That's been a, a profound shaper for me uh, as as a youth, but then also as a pastor interacting with youth. Uh, but then really a, a key moment would also be uh, when I left high school and I went to Concordia University, Ann Arbor. And uh, that was kind of the first moment in my life where I really got to uh, dig deep into God's Word and uh, study the Scripture and the original languages and, and ask really challenging questions of Scripture. And uh, the faculty there were just awesome to guide me through that. And, and so really that was a, another pivotal moment for me in my faith journey and my faith formation. Well, that time with family is such a beautiful thing that we certainly did some research. And, you know, that just comes out of Scripture and what we know from youth ministry about those bonds that get made in the family, be able to opportunity to talk about Scripture ask those questions, be pointed back to Christ and his word is just a beautiful thing. So love to hear those uh, ways in which your parents invested in you and uh, that family time. I do want to uh, have you talk a little bit about maybe uh, what you love about working with young people as a pastor in your current role, words of encouragement for others. One of my favorite things working with young people in my congregation, I have a, a, a small group, kind of a leadership development group of high schoolers that uh, I've been working with, and the, the focus for these high schoolers has to do with two things. It's um, thinking about mental health, wow. uh, but then also technology and social media and, and how they can be salt and light uh, for their peers and in their schools. And, and in working with this small leadership group uh, for the past several months, I've just been blown away by how much they care mm. for their peers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that they really have this mentality of, of we're in this together, uh, and they really want to support and encourage one another in a really profound way. Uh, and I'm not saying that adults don't have that, but it's really just this, this powerful feeling amongst them of, of we've got to look out for one another, even if 
we're we're not in the same clique or the same group. And I've just been really impressed by by that that sense of of caring for one another amongst my high school students. I love that uh, engaging young people in in leadership, especially in peer leadership, uh, is as. Uh, maybe lay leaders are thinking that would be a thing to get into. Any uh, piece of uh, advice uh, that you'd give them if they were starting a group like that? So we're just trying it out, but it's actually been quite successful. And to do this, what we've done is we, we reached out personally to seven students that we said, we think you have leadership capacity within your peer group at school or in the congregation. And, and over the course of six months, We've been meeting. Uh, I've actually recruited some uh, mental health professionals and, and, and professionals from the community and in our congregation to, to come alongside them as experts and, and help augment what I'm doing and teaching them. Uh, and so it's really the, the, the basic idea is, is just going deep with a small number of people uh, with the idea that they can have a powerful impact when, when they're released after this time of, of preparation and, and uh, kind of being poured into so we haven't figured it out completely yet, but I'd say to anybody, just just try it out and uh, yeah. see where that leadership development goes. Oh, and what a gift for both those young people and then uh, their peers and your congregation at large to have uh, that pouring in time of, of young leaders uh, to go in and engage both uh, in the, within their youth group, but in the greater congregation as well, I have to imagine. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's exciting. And we're excited to see how it continues to, to progress as we go. So you were a part of the 2019 gathering planning process. Uh, what was your role within our, our planner team? So I got to play several different roles, which was kind of fun. Uh, I'm kind of by nature interested in everything. So it's <laughs> kind of fun to be able to, to do that. Uh, one of the key things that I did through the whole planning process, uh, it sounds really fancy, uh, but content strategy. Ooh, that uh, does and, sound and, fancy. And so, it sounds so cool, and uh, to tell people that I was a consultant makes me sound super awesome. Uh, I want that I, I title my, next my, time. I wear my name tag around the house. <laughs> yeah. myself feel good. Uh, but anyway, what, what I was doing was really just helping the, the key leaders think about all of the content that's generated in preparation for the gathering, uh, and then how to kind of hone that content and, and manage it, and then use it in effective ways, kind of through key messages, uh, the concepts that, that are reoccurring concepts and themes, uh, sort of what phrases uh, do you hear throughout the gathering, and really just crystallize uh, on the content and, and how that's laid out for people. Uh, but then I also got to help with some of the Bible study preparation and the preparation of, of taking all the gathering resources and then making them into usable things for congregations and for individuals. Well, we just finished our evaluation meeting, and one thing that came through loud and clear was how well the young people and adults took the theme, Real Present God, back home with them and understood it, could articulate it. And I know you were just such a vital part of that process, so we are so thankful uh, for all the time that you invested in that. I know Reverend Derek Broughton, Program uh, Director for the Youth Gather, and I just sat in one meeting with you, and we were absolutely blown away. Came away much smarter people from that interaction. So we uh, really are so thankful for the work that you invested in that process. Well, you're kind. I appreciate it. Well, you were also a session speaker at the 2019 LCMS Youth Gathering and spoke on the title, Clearly Christian, Following Jesus in This Age of Confusion. Um, we're soon going to be having those sessions uh, released as podcasts, but I wanted you to maybe tell us a little bit about that experience and perhaps what feedback you received from youth and adults at the gathering or maybe what interactions or questions you heard while you were there. Absolutely. So we were talking about uh, some of the areas of interest that I, I do research in, technology, social media, uh, the internet, but then asking how can we be clearly Christian uh, in this digital age and in this age of confusion and what does it look like to be clearly Christian on the Internet and on social media uh, and things like that? And uh, one of my favorite things about being a session speaker is interacting with people after the mm -hmm. session is done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's absolutely my favorite part. And, and oddly enough, my favorite thing is not when people come to you with a question, like, hey, can you tell me more about this or can you suggest a book for that or something but I just love when, when students come up and they just want to tell you their story. Mm. Uh, and it's really just this thing of like, 
hey, I'm going to be going to this school next year, and it's a, a big research school and a public school, and I'm excited to be a follower of Jesus there. Mm. Uh, or, or would you, you know, keep me in prayer? Can we keep in touch? Or just any of those things. I just love, I love that. That let me just tell you my story. <laughs> You know, and just getting to know people in that and, and being encouraged by their story. So, uh, honestly, that's been one of my favorite things of, of being part of the gathering and the, the session speaker um, it is not only presenting a topic I'm passionate, passionate about, but then hearing their passion echoed and, and just seeing them go out into their various vocations with that passion and excitement. Awesome. So you were uh, also kind enough to write a story, uh, or study, excuse me, now on the eSource on another topic uh, for which you have written much on. Um, these are in books in, uh, published by Concordia Publish House, including Being Lutheran and Authentic Christianity, How Lutheran Theology Speaks to a Postmodern World. Um, it, uh, certainly Authentic Christianity was uh, co-written with Gene Edward Veith. And there's a lot in these books. Um, but one topic that I really appreciate, and this is kind of what you just ended on there, is your work to apply our Lutheran Christian faith to our everyday life and vocation um, and finding our daily purpose as God's people. Uh, why do you think that is so important for youth today? I think one, and this has been a perennial challenge, uh, I guess you could say, for the church. But I think there's just this huge divide between Sunday and mm. Monday, uh, or, or even a divide between Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. And what I really love to do, what, what I, I, I think the, the writing I've done on, on Lutheran theology and how it connects to everyday life, what I hope is that people can find ways to, to bridge that gap, mm. uh, that bridge the gap between their life in Christ and, and the rest of their life. Because, in fact, I'm, I'm quite convinced there is no gap, mm -hmm. um, or there ought not be a gap between your life in Christ and, and Monday morning or the rest of the week. Uh, and, and so I, I get excited helping people realize that that gap is not there and, and, and seeing their life in Christ as every, every second of their day uh, and every breath in their lungs and beat in their chest. And that's what I, I get excited about. Uh, and I think on a deeper level, too, it's just that, uh, boy, we live in a world where there is just deep, deep despair. Mm. Uh, and, and we all carry this despair with us, not just some people, but I mean, we're all kind of vulnerable to this, this sort of nihilism and, and meaninglessness in the universe. Uh, and, and then people are just asking these questions, you know, does my life matter? Do my actions matter? Like, where's meaning and purpose in my life? And I'm convinced the Lutheran tradition mm -hmm. is really uniquely situated to help answer these questions. Um, that in fact, we can say, we have a real present God who's not far, but has come into human flesh uh, to redeem a fallen creation. He gave his life uh, for us. He left the tomb empty. He's promised mm -hmm. his Holy Spirit to be present among us. He's promised to be present in his word and sacraments. And to me, that's hope yeah. uh, and that's meaning and purpose uh, in a world that, that, that just desperately needs hope and meaning and purpose. Yeah, and it's it's fascinating to hear you talk about how our Lutheran theology meets kind of these very practical, visceral needs that um, young people within and without of our congregations uh, need. And uh, so the resource you wrote for the eSource is called What Does It Mean to Be Lutheran? Um, and one of the things you address in that study is these sort of uh, tensions that we have, tensions that we hold um, in teaching young people. Uh, I think that's a really key piece of, there's a lot of tensions um, in our lives, in our everyday lives and how we manage those, but even in our theology, how we manage those tensions. How did you land on that as the lens for your study? So somewhere along the lines, I heard somebody talk about the, the tension of a violin string, mm. uh, and, and I just have not been able to shake that image. Uh, so for instance, we often hear tension, and you think about like a tension headache or, or tension in your back because you're stressed out or, you know, uh, tension in a room. And, and so we have this negative connotation for tension, but really, tension can be this beautiful, important thing, and that's where the violin string comes in, that, that if you have a violin string and it's not at the right tension, it's going to be off or, or it won't even make a sound at all. If you over-tighten that violin string and, and it's too much tension, it'll snap and it won't be there anymore. But at just the right tension, uh, it, it can play this, this beautiful concerto. 
and, and so that's an example of where tension is 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 beautiful. Um, and as I interact with Lutheran theology, this is something going back, like I said, to Concordia and Arbor, when I decided that I want to consider being a pastor, I started wrestling with why would I be Lutheran and why wouldn't I be Baptist or Catholic or, or anything else? Uh, and I had to wrestle with, with sort of why this and not that. Uh, and I came to realize that, that Lutherans, I think, are, are uniquely adept or, or, or equipped at uh, maintaining theological tensions. Uh, so, for instance, we, we look at the truths of Scripture, and we don't try to force them into tidy little boxes to make it all rational and make it fit and make it make perfect sense. But instead we'll say, we're going to hold these two tensions together, uh, even if at times it's not completely reasonable or rational, but we believe that this is holding biblical truths together. Uh, so, you know, some traditions will overemphasize the law mm-hmm. at the expense of the gospel. Uh, or they'll overemphasize the gospel and neglect the reality of the law. But I think as Lutherans, we've we found a way to say, no, both of these uh, are vital, mm-hmm. and both of these need to be held together so that they can be the beautiful thing that, that God intends them to be. I think it's so important when you talk about kind of some of those, uh, the, the, enjoy, the joy, but certainly the times, too, that there can be difficulty in, in holding those things together and learning about that. I love how in your books and in the study, too, I mean, you talk about that importance of community and how we're able to walk along each other um, as we study that, support one another through that, as we hold those things in tension. But like I said, the beautiful side of that um, and really keeping uh uh, faithful to God's word and his proclamation for us. Along those lines, uh, what do you hope young people will walk away with from this study? Uh, pretty much everything I write, uh, I hope people will walk away with Jesus. <laughs> and I know that sounds kind of kind of silly or simple or whatever, but it's just like whatever I write, whether it's a book or an article or a Bible study, uh, my hope is that people walk away from it saying, boy, I, I, I see Jesus clearly in this or through this, or I see the hope of Jesus more clearly in my life as a result of, of doing this. So really that is a, a hope that I have that as people study this and, and do this Bible study, that they don't just walk away saying, oh, I understand what it means to be a Lutheran or something like that. But they say, oh, I see how Jesus is preeminent in what it means to be a Lutheran. And that if you don't see Jesus, then you haven't properly understood what this Lutheran tradition is. Uh, so really, Jesus is my, my, my main hope that people walk away from this study seeing Jesus. Uh, the other thing, too, is that I do think it would be great if people study this, and students and, and uh, leaders alike, that they, as they study it, they, they, they can see sort of the unique uh, contribution mm. that the Lutheran tradition is to the rest of Christendom, uh, that they can say, oh, I, I see sort of where we're uniquely coming from, uh, and how this is a very valuable thing uh, for the, the church as a whole, to, to be able to embrace God's truths, but hold those tensions as well and uh, and speak them, not one at the expense of the other, but but hold them together. And if they come out of this Bible study and wanting more, you certainly have written um, some excellent <laughs> books for them to follow up with. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so we know that a lot of times it's, uh, it's pastors, mission workers, but particularly lay leaders who are leading this study um, that's on the e-source. So they're going to download that with a leader's guide. Uh, any encouragement, particularly to those adults that are going to be leading your study, anything uh, you want them to know as they kind of d- dive into that? Absolutely. Uh- Theology does not have to be boring. Mm. Uh, I think Amen. people often <laughs> hear, hear that word. <laughs> yeah, people hear that word theology, and they assume like it would be more exciting to read the phone book, uh, or, or they, they hear theology and they're like, "This is going to be like more complicated than assembling IKEA furniture or something <laughs> like that." Uh, and it's just it doesn't have to be that. Uh, and that's really my encouragement to leaders for this is that that you can. Uh, engage, you know, rigorous theology and, and, and actually deal with, with tough things and ask difficult questions and all that, but you can do it in such a way that, it, that it's exceedingly relevant uh, to daily life. Uh, and honestly, I think uh, for a lot of youth ministry that, that my experience has been that, that really the students want to dig into kind of some serious stuff and um, uh, just, just playing games and surface conversations are, are kind of past that. Uh, and and to get to get serious and to to dive deep, uh, it doesn't have to be boring. Uh, and, and I think the issue then is it's just 
it's a matter of doing the work as the leader of connecting theology to our daily life and to our contemporary culture. Mm. Uh, and again, that takes work and that takes mm-hmm. reflection mm-hmm. and it takes um, time to, to synthesize that and figure that out. But I think that work is well worth it uh, to, to make those connections to, to daily life and, and our, our culture that we live in. Fantastic. Well, again, thank you for all the many ways that you have invested in young people across the Senate. We'd love to give you one last chance for any last words of encouragement for our adult leaders and young people that you've interacted with through your speaking, as well as the writing that you've done for us. Yeah, I think, honestly, that, that encouragement that I would have is just to speak the name of Jesus. Mm. Uh, that's one of the things that we do in our congregation uh, all the time, that we encourage our people to uh, do that. Uh, in a world that's just really confused about what it means to be a Christian, mm-hmm. uh, and they're not quite clear, what, what are you all about? Uh, it's very easy for us to talk about uh, the church, or to talk about potlucks, or the choir, or, or I'm going to pray for you, or something like that. But really just to, to be clear about it and say, Jesus. <laughs> my hope mm-hmm. is in Jesus. My, my trust is in Jesus. Uh, I cling to the promises of Jesus uh, and that's really, I guess, if I had any word of encouragement, it's to, to, to be a person who uses the name of Jesus often uh, in your conversation, uh, in your own life, in your prayers, in, in everything you do. Amen to that. Again, I want to thank you, Pastor Trevor Sutton, Associate Pastor and Director of Ministry at St. Luke Lutheran Church in Lansing, Michigan. We are so thankful for your time and the way that you are able to share your gifts with the greater church. Uh, God bless you and all the things that you do. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you. Incredibly grateful for Pastor Sutton's um, answers and and his conversation today. Uh, So good to hear him articulate many of the things that we talk about when we're talking about seven practices of healthy youth ministry. Um, Even just from the start of how engaged his parents were um, in that faith formation when he was uh, really young. Right. I mean, one of those things exactly that we talk about. I know he said it may have been a little... Um, abnormal when you're talking about the Congregational Youth Ministry, but nothing to apologize for. And what a beautiful story to hear, engaged in the Word at home, um, and just what that was an enriching experience for him. And we think about how he's been a supportive adult as a pastor and getting others with his young people. Man, leadership program, that just sounds fantastic for him to be walking alongside those young people, theologically looking at their world. Um, and and I'll say too, we we hear this in our uh, Lutheran Young Adult program a lot, as well as like the things like the youth gathering, just the heart that young people have for their peers. <laughs> I mean, they want to know these things. They want to grow in their knowledge of scripture, of theology, of proclaiming the word, of sharing the word, because they love their friends, um, that they're highly engaged in the world, um, and how the Christian church is able to walk alongside them, resource them, encourage them to go out and be those um, evangelists, if you will, in their everyday life um, as they share the good news of Jesus with those around them. And I so appreciated his uh, comments about how theology that we have is not only rich and helpful, but not boring. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think when we talk about uh, our uh, deeply understanding our baptismal faith, that can sound pretty dull to some people or how do I make that jazz that up for for youth ministry Um, and the reality is it is really interesting and young people are really interested in diving deep into understanding our Lutheran theology yeah and I think so much of what he said too that the the deeper theology is answering the questions youth are Mm. asking today Mm. Uh, they're not superficial questions as they're being forced at a younger younger age I think to deal with complex questions and a complex world that because of maybe social media and technology they are dealing with at a younger age and so they're asking tough questions and we hope the church is the place where those questions are being asked Um, and then it's also then uh, confronted if you will or or uh, pointed back to God's word and and theology strong theology to be able to wrestle with these things and as as Pastor Sutton says sometimes hold things in tension too Uh, but yet uh, just to have that chance to have that interaction with young people is a beautiful thing. I'm really grateful that he wrote such a great study, um, something very uh, accessible for a lay leader who's wanting to take that dive in with their youth group, uh, something that was really uh, 
easy to lead and but also has a lot of profound depth and and points young people back to Jesus. I love that encouragement to to constantly be proclaiming the name of Jesus. I think we forget that sometimes in our uh, the busyness of ministry uh, and trying to get things done. That really is um, our calling is to be speaking the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I, I th- I've we talk a lot about resiliency too, and I think uh, hearing him uh, talk about the session at the gathering of people who are going off maybe into certain fields, um, being in- equipped and encouraged by his talk, um, and I th- hopefully there's other adults around those young people who are doing that. They find get connected with a LCMS campus ministry or campus ministry uh, that's on their campus when they go into those spots. And I remember too. I mean, Trevor spoke back at uh, the 2016 gathering on kind of a science and faith topic, and I remember people saying about how they came uh, away refreshed and renewed and as they thought about a future vocation in the sciences, um, be able to understand how do I take my faith as a Christian who's also a scientist into the world and be able to share Jesus in that context. And so really need to see uh, young people starting to make that connection already. So encouraging for me. Hopefully it is for you as well. Um, and we hope that you are getting on that youthesource.com, uh, downloading this study as well as the other studies that are a part of this series, uh, the interviews that we're doing um, on these resources that came out of the 2019 Youth Gathering. Thanks again so much for joining us. End Goals Podcast is a production of LCMS Youth Ministry and KFUO Radio. To find out more about LCMS Youth Ministry or find links to resources mentioned, go to kfuo.org slash youth ministry. Thank you for listening and caring for the young people of our church.